Hello everyone and welcome to the final day of premiere week. I am your yarn host Jennifer. It's day five. It's day five. I feel like I can breathe again. <laughs> it has been it has been a busy three weeks. Um to start. I forgot to grab the yarn. Hang on. It's right here. It's right here. It's right. I got it. I got it. <clears throat> There's a colossal mess behind me. <sighs> We're going to pretend we don't see it if you did. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that needs to be sorted through and put in other rooms. For some reason, this room always becomes the catch-all. Like, okay, mom's in there. We'll just throw it in there. She'll deal with it. There's yarn back there. You know, whatever. <laughs> So, today's yarn that we are featuring is Premier Anti-Pilling DK Colors Batik. The color that I chose for the cardigan that I am wearing is Lollipop. Yeah, Lollipop. This yarn is 383 yards per cake. The pattern that we used, I did not grab. I, I am unprepared today. Hang on. It was right next to the yarn. <laughs> So, focus woman, focus. We are using, this is another pattern that is free and available to download off of Premier Yarns website. It is called the Tulip Lace Cardigan, or Cardi. Um, it is worked in one piece. It is worked in one piece. You crochet in the round, and then you split right here, and you crochet the front panels, and then the back panel. And then you just seam it on the shoulders. I have never, this is the first time I've done a garment in this fashion. Um, I, I have done like a full front panel, full front panel, and then a back panel. I have never done a garment that splits for the arms. So this was a new experience for me. And how beautiful this cardigan looks on me tells you how easy this pattern is to recreate. Um, I am going to make some more of these because I am absolutely in love with this. The yarn I knew that I loved because when this came out last year, I believe it was last year, I should probably tell you a little about it. It's 100% anti-pilling acrylic when it came out because it is the anti-pilling line. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to try it because I love cake yarn. I love yarns that are anti-pilling. They are super, super soft. It's also machine washable and dryable. It says machine wash, warm, tumble dry. Um, because it's anti-pilling, it's gonna last you a long time. This is the material you want to make your garments out of. Yes, acrylic can be a little bit hot. However, this is very lacy, it's very open. This is very perfect for like Easter. I am so happy with this cardigan, it's so pretty. That's why I picked this color the lollipop because it is very spring and you know it's spring right now and I just really wanted a spring garment which is why we did the spring fling t-shirt on Monday and Friday we did this beautiful cardigan now if you paired up the yarns just right you could probably wear them together like if you did that in a solid color and then had this to match it it would be so pretty together although I'm not one to wear crochet on top of crochet that might be a bit redundant but you know so anyway this yarn is a lightweight number three. It's not real super thin. Um, I actually forgot it was a lightweight number three. And when I went back and I was doing the research on this yarn to create this little intro, I was like, wait a minute, that's a DK weight yarn. But it, I worked it up as if it was, I used a six millimeter hook. I worked this up as if it was a worsted weight yarn. And as you can see, it is, absolutely stunning this pattern is trebles they're treble shells don't let that scare you so easy this was so easy this only took me um just it wasn't even full three days to make this so two and a half days of me crocheting like several hours a day that's all it took me and it's a beautiful beautiful garment this yarn is so soft <laughs> The only problem that I'm going to have with this is I'm going to be wanting to like rub my garment all day long just because it's so soft and so nice. This makes beautiful baby items. I have experience with making baby items out of this. 
this yarn is just really nice and that's why we picked it for our final video because honestly this yarn is cream of the crop it is the best um, it is tested and approved against 300 and plus 350 plus harmful substances so there's no chemicals on here that's going to irritate your skin there's no chemicals on here that's going to harm baby it, it's it's a safe it's a safe material for anybody and I really like that Premier has so many options that have the standard, the Ogotech standard, tested and approved against all the harmful ingredients. Um, what did I forget to tell you? So it says it's a lightweight number three. It recommends four millimeter hook and needles. Um, yeah. So what I did with this, this pattern is I took the pattern and the pattern, ironically enough, is meant for the hipster yarn, which is what we used for our t-shirt. <laughs> on Monday so if you prefer to make this out of cotton for yourself if you live in a hot climate you want a cotton cardigan the cotton sprout that we used for the, the, the bottom and the sleeves or the hipster cotton would work very well for this pattern but because I used a different yarn I used the beautiful and soft and luscious batik um, I had to adjust the pattern just slightly like this, the measurements said that it would take for my size garment seven balls of the hipster at 229 yards each. And when I did the math, because these are 383 yards, I calculated that I would need five of these to make my garment. Turns out I only needed three. So, <laughs> and this is a 4X. I only used three cakes. Now, I would have a fourth cake on hand just in case, and I did. I absolutely, obviously I have a fourth cake right here, but <laughs> I had a fourth cake on hand. I actually did not have the five cakes because I purchased three thinking it was going to be enough and then it wasn't enough and I needed more. So I, luckily I had four. <laughs> luckily I had four. Um, and I had more than enough. You can make this as long or as short as you want. You can just slightly alter the pattern with how many rows you do. I took some of the rows out. This hits me just at my hips, which is where I like it to hit. You can make it longer and make it a duster. You would just obviously need more yarn. You can make it shorter and make like a little little crop top cardigan that goes with like a dress. If you just want like a little shorty sweater, you can absolutely do that. This pattern is so easily adjustable um, because of the way it is the way it is created. It, I really really love this pattern. The difference that I the main difference that I did I did not add sleeves. You see here. You create the sleeves from the bottom up and then you sew them here. I don't feel the need to wear sleeves because I get hot really quick. So that might also take into consideration with you needing that extra cake of yarn. I did not need it. I like having my arms out and free. Even though I have bat wings, I don't care about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very happy. I This, this week has been amazing. Um, this yarn is so delightful to work with. It's so buttery soft and delicious and just lovely. My camera keeps going bright on me. I'm apologizing for that in advance because I know that's going to be an issue. I don't know what the heck is going on. It's in the wrong mode. Little man gets in here and he is constantly messing with my settings. Constantly. <laughs> I can't keep him away from my camera no matter how many times I hide it. He's always stealing like my electronic stuff. He's an electronic like nerd. Um, this yarn is so nice. I highly recommend, even if you don't make this pattern, I highly recommend this yarn. It is beautiful. It works up great for all garments. Works up. This would be an amazing baby blanket. It would be an amazing regular blanket. Lap gan, full size, but I mean this just is a really nice yarn. Um, so I'm going to wrap up premiere week now kind of but stay tuned for the rest of this video because I do post in the pattern for this gorgeous cardigan it's so pretty oh another thing I and I talk about all of the things that I did to alter this pattern in the tutorial instead of seaming the shell to shell here which is what they recommend I put a half double crochet border on both sides and then seamed that together and then I added a little half double crochet border here and here that's all I did that's all I did I just changed it up just a little bit to fit what I wanted out of a garment. And stay tuned for the tutorial. <laughs> I'm so happy that Premier Yarns is finally 
making garments that are size inclusive. This pattern, this pattern as written goes from a small to a 5X. This is a 4X. And I know that very easily you could alter this to make it a 6X or a 7X if that's what you needed to wear. Um, <clears throat> very happy Premier Yarns. I'm speaking directly to you right now. Please continue with the size inclusive patterns. We fat people want it. <laughs> we want it. We need it. Keep giving us beautiful patterns like this. This this is so beneficial for our community to have more wide range patterns in different sizes so that we all can wear it without having to take a size 2X pattern and try to fix it to make it fit our body, which I know how to do, but not everyone else knows how to do. So Premier, keep up with the 5X patterns, please. I am really happy that I found this pattern because when I found this pattern, I know that a lot of companies do not have up to 5X. They do not have patterns past a 2X in most cases. Sometimes you'll find a 3X. I'm just outside of that. I'm a 4X. I need bigger garments. A lot of us in here need bigger garments. So when I found this, I was like, I don't care how much time it takes me. I'm going to make two wearables for us bigger people. And you little people too. Like, hey, the little people can wear it too. It goes from small to 5X. <clears throat> Same thing with my tank top or my t-shirt. It is vital to have bigger size patterns. It is vital. We need it. We require it. We request it so kindly, please. <laughs> And thank you so much. All right, now let's get on to the tutorial. Everyone that has tuned in through all of Premier Week, thank you so much. Thank you to Premier Yarns. I do give another thank you at the end of the tutorial, by the way. But thank you to Michelle for all of the help that you have given me and to Clara. Um, thanks, Premier Yarns, for the discount. Uh, and thank you all for watching. And stay tuned for the tutorial, but I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. All right, everybody, let's get started. Today's tutorial is going to be this little cardigan called the Tulip Lace Cardi, and I printed this off of PremierYarns.com. I will link the patterns below. <clears throat> and to start, we are going to just do a quick little read over this. I This pattern was meant for the hipster cotton yarn which i believe is labeled as a number four however to me it feels like a number three so i have no problem switching it out for a three weight but we are going to use the size hook that they recommend which they recommend a five millimeter hook with the three weight it will be fine it will work out and it also says in the pattern notes for a closer fit choose one to three inches larger than your full bust measurement for a looser fit Choose a size four to six inches larger than your full bust measurement. Now, my stomach is way larger than my chest. So, <laughs> that might be something you want to consider if you want this cardigan to fully cover your stomach. That is not what I... I want it to fit like it's fitting her. I want it to be open in the front. I want it to just be something that drapes around my arms. And in this tutorial, I am not adding the sleeves because I don't want the sleeves. I don't like the I don't like the look of the sleeves in this pattern. I just don't want to deal with the sleeves. So we're not I'm not showing the sleeves in this pattern tutorial. All that to be said, you are going to measure around your bust. And then you're going to add one to three inches for a tighter fit, four to six inches for a larger fit. And that will determine what size you make with this. I am also going to say this. If you measure it to your bust entirely and you pick the size that you normally are wearing for me it's a 4x I'm making a 4x if you want it to close a little more around your bust you can just crochet a line of double crochets up and around the neck and back and forth and it will add on a foldable collar on the top and it will add on length in the front so that you'll have more of a closed fit you can actually also add buttonholes to that you can do all of that. So for this, this says that I need seven balls of the hipster yarn for this, but I calculated it's seven balls of 229 yards. What I actually need is five balls of the batik because that's what we're using. So I did the math yardage to yardage. Um, I, I need for a 4X, four balls of, or five balls, not four, five balls of the, the batik, which is what we have. 
And to get started, we're, the, the pattern says that you work the cardigan, the front and the back panels is just one panel. So you're working a large panel that should be wide enough to wrap around your body. Close or not close, that's up to you whether you want it to meet and close in the front around your largest part of your body. Um, that also is easily adjustable. If you get the first two rows done and like it doesn't wrap around your body the way you want it to, you can go up a size or add sti stitches to make it larger. So that's another thing that we can do when we're making this pattern. And then when you are going to work up that whole panel and then we're going to split the back for the arms and then we're going to work the back panel and then we're going to work two front panels just on this section here. So we have this part open for the arms and then it seams up here at the top. And this is made with treble crochets. So if you don't know how to make a treble crochet, I will show you that. And it also is made starting with a foundation single crochet, which has scared me in the past. And I can do it, but I do struggle with the foundation, sing foundation single crochet. I'm going to show you and I am going to work it with you. But if you can't get the foundation single foundation single crochet, if you can't get that, if you're struggling with it too hard, you can go ahead and just chain and then put a row of single or single crochets. It's gonna have less give at the the bottom of your cardigan. It's not gonna stretch as much. Um, but that is an alternative to doing the foundation single crochet because I know some people, myself included, do struggle with it. I have done it. It's not incredibly difficult. It's just a matter. It's a little um, finagly. So to get started, like I said, I am a 4X. I am making myself a 4X. So I am going to start with foundation single crochet of 181 stitches. So let's get started. To make a foundation single crochet, and I may have to do this a couple times to get it right to show you. We're gonna start with a slip knot, very easy slip knot. There, we did it. All right, we're halfway there. <laughs> You're gonna chain two, one, two. Now we're gonna go into the very first stitch that is touching the knot that we made. We're gonna go in as if we're gonna make a single crochet, but you are gonna only pull up one loop, okay? Now, to make the foundation list or the foundation single crochet, you have to chain one and that acts as your chain. So it's like you're building a row of chains and single crochets all in one stitch. So in order to get the chain of the foundation, you're gonna chain one, now you have two, and then you're gonna make a single crochet. Make sure that you do this loosely so that you can see what you're doing. Now here is where it gets a little bit, this is the part I struggle with. Okay, we are going to be working through that chain. So we got to turn it over without losing our stitch. Turn it over and there should be like a V stitch here, right? But for me, there's like two threads there. So we got to split that as if we're working through this as if it's a double crochet, but it's really just a, a chain. And we're going to pull up one loop, right? And then we're going to chain one and then we are going to single crochet okay and this is what it will look like it's not real pretty <laughs> but this is a single a foundation or foundation list single crochet so I'm gonna show you again we're gonna turn it over and see there's this part here that's the single crochet and then there's this part here that is the chain see there's like kind of a V there we need to work into that V and this, I had to watch these videos over and over and over again to figure out how to get this just right. So see, it should look like that. I'm gonna pull up a loop and then we're gonna chain one just through that bottom. That's our chain stitch. Now we're gonna put a single crochet on top of it. Okay, and so we're creating single crochets and chains all in one shot. Let's do it again. Go through that bottom. We need those that V stitch that looks like that right there. Pull up a loop, chain through that bottom one, and then single crochet. All right, now we got it. Now we got it. I have no idea what stitch number we're on, but we got it. So we'll do it again through that V. 
pull up a loop, chain through the bottom, and then double or single crochet. Okay. Now we got the hang of it. Last time I tried to show you this in a tutorial, it was a disaster. I tried for half an hour and then I quit and I just went to a chain and a single crochet row. There we go, we got it. I'm gonna keep going slow because if I go any faster than what I'm showing you, <laughs> I mess up myself. Because right now I'm just practicing. I'll go back and count these in a little bit because I still got a bunch, I have to, I have to do what 180 something of these and right now I'm just making sure I get it right I bet some of you think I'm so strange I'm up here doing tutorials and I am not an expert <laughs> not an expert oops went through both I was only supposed to go through one and then we go through both just make sure you keep this nice and loosey-goosey so that you can see where, because that's one of the problems that I have, is if I speed up, I crochet tighter, and then I can't figure out where to stick my hook at, or I fight it, and it becomes an issue. Let's see if you look if you look at these stitches. Okay, so here is the top part. These are the tops of the single crochets. This is the bottom part. This is the chain area. That is what it looks like. The problem I have a hard time with is if I do this too tight, that chain that I'm supposed to go through, I have a hard time seeing where I'm supposed to stick my hook at so I gotta like kind of pull it apart. And see, I even did it wrong there. Put it through the first one. Put it through the second one. There we go. Chain and single crochet. Those nuts count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got twelve. Alright. Alright, so now that I showed you how to do this, I because I take so stinking long to do this, I am going to get up to whatever my number is, 181. And I will come back and show you what to do next. Once I get done fighting this. Because <laughs> I did it too tight again. Alright guys. I'll be back at 181 foundation single crochet. Alright. That was intense. But we did it. <laughs> we did it. It took me way longer than it should have. But that's okay. Because you know. Like I said. This stitch comes very hard for me. And it probably does for a lot of other people. And it's okay. Now, we got row one. I foundation single crocheted 181. Now it says chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. So I should have. And I'm going to show you guys this only because I want to show you where we're supposed to be crocheting with. In case you have never used a foundation single crochet before. This should look very similar to a regular single crochet. You should just be able to... On the top of your stitch, there should be a V there, and just put a single crochet there. And go into the next. There should be a V there, and just single crochet all the way across. And this is some of my my stitches are a little bit twisted, a little bit wonky, but that's okay because this is the bottom of our garment, and once we get some more structural stitches in there. It will even out. Not a problem at all. It is very windy. Wow. It is very windy. My bird feeder just looked like it was about to fly off the porch. That was a little bit crazy. Um, 
Like I said, it's going to be 80 degrees today, but there is a cold front coming in. And I think that is going to bring some crazy weather. We'll see what happens. See? See how it already straightened out over here? It looks a little bit wonky. See? Told ya. If you pull the stitches apart a little bit, you can see this part right here is the chain. And above that is the single crochet. So you want to make sure when you're going in, you don't grab that one. You go above it into that. And then you just have the two of the V on top of there when you're doing your single crochets. Another tip I did to help me keep track. I learned this from another podcaster. Ever so many stitches, put a stitch marker. And that is what I did since I have an abundant amount of stitch markers because my beautiful daughter makes them for me and for her Etsy shop. Rainbow Bee Beads. She is always linked below if you're curious. Nope, see now this one's a little bit tight so I gotta try to finagle myself in there. And I leave all of these these struggles I have with my patterns or with my stitching in my videos because I want you to know that it's normal to struggle. Like, there is not a perfect crocheter out there. There's just not. We all have our things that are difficult for us. We all have the things that are super easy for us. You know, it doesn't make one person better than the other one. That's why I leave when I'm struggling with a pattern, where I'm struggling with a stitch, I leave that in. I don't try to, I don't try to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. Because part of my crochet journey was learning that crochet should not be perfect. Because that is, and I've told this story in the past before, that's the reason it took me so long to learn how to crochet. Because my mother was a crocheter. My mother was a perfectionist. So I took, I put a stitch marker every 50 stitches. That's, you're going to see those every 50 stitches. And they don't have to stay here. I just put them there so it was easier to count and keep track. Um, my mother was a perfectionist and if I didn't do it exactly right, she would rip out my work. And that left me not wanting to ever learn to crochet until after she passed away. And now I wish I had learned it while she was alive. That's why I leave the imperfections and the mistakes in because it's okay to make mistakes. It's all part of the process. I really like this colorway of this yarn that I picked. I really do. I think it's so pretty. I think this is going to make a lovely spring cardigan, summer cardigan even. I especially like that we're not going to add, well, I'm not going to add sleeves to it because I am not one of those people that are self-conscious about my sleeves or my arms. I know that I have fat arms. I don't have a problem with my fat arms. I don't care if they're exposed. I am not going to be hot because I'm covering up because someone else might possibly have a problem with my bat wings. That's not my thing. And even when I lived in Michigan, which is a far cooler climate, I still wore tank tops all the time and sleeveless clothes. Even in the middle of winter, I didn't like wearing coats because I was always hot. I was really excited to see this pattern on Premier's website because not a lot of their patterns go up to a 5x a lot of their patterns are a lot of their clothes patterns only go up to maybe an extra large maybe a 2x and so when i saw this one i was like okay we have to try this this pattern and i have not made it before this tutorial so this is we're trying this for the first time together but i was very excited to see 5x and i hope that if premiere is listening that they do more bigger plus size inclusive size patterns because there is definitely a lot of us out here who want it, which is why my channel has so many of you lovely people here, because I'm talking about what's not being talked about. I'm showing patterns that are not widely available. Although, I don't know if you guys know this, 
there is a um, there is a I forgot what I was gonna say I'll think about it <laughs> we'll, we'll revisit that totally lost it that happens the older I get the less I remember and you know what's crazy about this I can remember I have memories from when I was I can remember when I was one and a half. I can remember my childhood. I can remember my early childhood in great detail. I cannot remember what I was thinking 10 seconds ago. Oh, I can remove this stitch marker. A little starfish. Definitely can't remember what happened yesterday. And while we're doing this tutorial, I can't remember where I put the fifth cake of this yarn. So. It'll be interesting to see if I have enough yarn in my stash to uh, complete this project. I should, but we'll see. I gotta find the fifth cake. I know it's here somewhere. If not, I'll just have to order another one. Ooh, we're coming up to the yellow. That's why I liked this color because a lot of like pastel colors they, they tend to be baby colored so it'll be either pinks and pinks and whites or blues and blues and whites or like yellow and green or yellow and white but like you never see the pink and the blue and the yellow together and I just think it is so pretty I don't know if I told you but this color weighs lollipop This yarn is a little bit splitty, just a little bit. It's not enough that it's bothering me. Um, but when I do tutorials, I am holding my arms in an unnatural fashion away from my body on a table. <laughs> and so sometimes that makes the splitting worse. But if I were to go and like pause this video to finish the row and I go somewhere else to sit and crochet, the, I'm not getting splitting at all because my arms are more relaxed and I'm not holding my arms upward. Which, you know, can be a problem. I like this pattern because the shells are actually treble shells. So they will be bigger, which means this will most likely work up faster. Um, sometimes though, working with trebles, it, because you're doing an extra whirl around, sometimes that will cause, um, a little bit of arm pain for me in my forearm. But I have made whole garments out of treble and, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just like an extra long double crochet. This yarn is also really soft. Feels nice in my hands. We're down to the first 50 stitches we created. My little shamrock. I hope the weather is nice wherever you are. I hope it's mild, temperatured, it's nice and breezy. Not too hot, not too cold. Because today it's going to be kind of hot. It's going to be kind of hot. I don't mind summer. I don't mind 80 degree temperatures, but I prefer like 70, maybe 68. 68 sounds perfect to me. Light breeze. I'd love to be sitting on the beach right now, just watching the waves or playing in the waves. Yeah. I'm ready for summer. Ooh, my, uh, 
Stitches are twisting there. We are almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Crocheters from everywhere will say we're almost there. So you could tell this is where I first started the row. Stitches look real ugly, but it don't matter because once we get this other single crochet in there, it evens them right out. So if you started off the same way I did, where you're struggling with that foundation single crochet, don't worry about it. See, look how look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that is. I love the way it looks. It just it fights me a little bit with those foundation single crochets because I don't have enough practice doing them and I just recently within the past couple months learned how to do that and I haven't practiced a whole lot but I think I'm going to start practicing that more often because I struggle a lot with the starting chains twisting and if I can get this down that will make my life so much easier with a lot of projects I may just have to practice, practice, practice. All right. Yeah, as we row two, you ready to start row? Although it says, let's see, row two. Hang on. I can't read my pattern around my hands. So we're going to do four rows of single crochet. All right, so that was row two. And chain one, we're going to turn. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do three more rows of single crochet. Um, I am just going to do three more rows, and I will meet you at the end of the fourth row of single crochet. All right, so I got my four rows of single crochet there. Now, if you didn't want to do four rows of single crochet there, you could actually have done like two rows of double crochet and it probably would have looked really close to the same. Uh, or two rows of half double crochet would have been, you know. We're just making a little, this is gonna be the bottom of our sweater, give it a little uh, stability down there. Now the pattern wants us to do the setup for the tulip lace stitch. So we are going to chain four. One, two, three, oops, four. That counts as a treble. And now we are going to skip two stitches. One, two, and in the third, we're going to put a shell, which is a treble shell. And the treble shell is five trebles. So we're gonna put, we'll wrap our yarn twice. Go into there, pull up a loop, take off two, take off two, take off two. We're going to do that five times right here. So there's one. Wrap it twice. Pull up a loop. Pull off two, pull off two, pull off two. Wrap it twice. Go into that same stitch. Pull up a loop. Pull off two, pull off two, pull off two. There's three. There's whoops four and there's five now we need to skip two more stitches one two and in the third we're going to put a treble so wrap it twice we have a column so we are going to do column shell column then we're going to repeat that all the way across. So that will be the pattern for this row is column, shell, column, shell, column, shell, column, shell. So we're going to wrap it twice, skip the next two stitches, go into the third and make five more trebles. Cause we're treble, treble. I always like the rotation 
of making a treble that that part wrapping it twice I just like that I found it to be thrilling I don't know why <laughs> sometimes when I'm doing that I sing move my body like a cyclone One, two three now we're gonna skip two and go into the third and we're gonna put a column so that is another treble it's just one treble see that is what it should look like this is pretty one two three sometimes I pick yarn to go with a pattern and I'm like I don't know how that's gonna look and then we just go along with it anyway so we skip two and in the third we're putting five treble again because we're doing a shell so far I'm really liking the way this is looking four and a five and then we are going to skip three oops I only did a double crochet and wrap it twice make sure you wrap it twice so you get that uh, treble you don't accidentally do a double crochet one two three put a shell which is five trebles Three, four, five. apparently we got a big section of white right here. There's our shell. I'm going to one, two, three, put a treble in the third stitch, skip two, and in the third put a treble. Oh, so far we got four trebles. Hmm. I was expecting each shell to be a different color. One, two, three. Put a shell. Four. Five trebles. two and in the third put our column which is a treble oops got a little tangle skip two and in the third put a treble shell which is five trebles Skip the next two, and in the third, make a column, which is, you guys already know, it's a treble. You guys got this. You got this. We're just going to take this all the way across the row. We're going to skip two, and in the third, put a shell. Skip two, and in the third, put a column, which is a treble. Five trebles, one treble. Five trebles, one treble. All the way across until we reach the end of the row. And then after that... Because this is just our setup row for the shells. We're gonna I'll show you how to do the next row, which is just pretty much a whole lot of this again. And we're gonna do that for the amount of inches that your pattern calls for. And because mine is a 4x, I am going to repeat that for where am I looking? Where am I looking? 22, 22 inches. All right, guys, I am going to pause here and I will meet you at the end of this setup row. I am just about to the end of the row. I'm putting my last shell in. One, two, Three, four, and five. 
And then in the very last stitch of the row, we are going to put our last treble or column, if you will. This is what it looks like so far. For the most part, the shells are all solid color with no like weird breaks across the shell. Like they're a little blue there. Over here, the yellow and the pink kind of split. I don't mind that, but for the most part, like the shells are all, it's pretty. I just like it. I just like it. <laughs> all right, so the next row, this is going to be the repeat pattern. We are going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. We're going to turn our work so that we're working in the right direction. And we are going to put two trebles in the same stitch. That is going to count as a half of a shell. That's not a, that's not a half, a double crochet or a treble. We're going to put two trebles in the same stitch. It's going to count as a half of a shell. So that counts as three trebles. The chain four is a treble and then two more trebles counts as a half a shell. And then we are going to skip two trebles, one, two, and in the center of the shell, we are going to put a treble. Then we're going to skip the next two trebles and in the top of the column, we are going to put a shell, which is five trebles. Four and five. Then we're going to go over to the center of our shell, which is skip two trebles and go into the dead center of that shell. And we are going to put a column or a treble, if you will. Okay, so that is what this next row is going to look like. We are going to put, we started the row with a half shell. We put a treble in the center of the shell of the previous row. And we're putting a shell in the top of the treble of the previous row. And we're going to continue that across. So that it will be shell, treble, shell, treble, shell, treble, shell, treble, etc. All the way across. And then the next row after that is going to be a repeat of this row, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check my pattern. Yeah. So that's your two row repeat. We're going to do this row where we start with a sh uh, half a shell. We go treble shell, treble shell. And we're going to end the row in the last stitch, which was a column. This will be a half a shell here. And then we're going to chain four. And then we're going to go across. That will be our column. And we'll do a shell, column, shell, column, shell. So every other row we will start and end with a half shell. And then every other row from that we will start with a chain four. So, yeah. And we're going to do this for however many inches your pattern says. So for mine I said it was 22 inches, I believe. 22 inches. Yep, 22 inches. So I am going to work this row... I will come back just to make sure that you understand how to do the next row, chain four, and then, yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you that. But for now, put a column in the top of your shell, put a shell in the top of your column, and just do that across. All right, made it to the end of the row. I have one more shell, one more column, and one more half a shell to put in.
four, five, oops, column, and then a half a shell in this last chain four stitch, which counts as our treble. So three trebles is a half a shell. The camera is drifted. So now we got to the end of our row. We've got our half a shell here. We're going to chain four, three and four. We are going to turn our work. And then <clears throat> we are going to go over here to the column that we made. So we got the three trebles here and the column and we are going to put a shell. which is five trebles. Two, was that two? No, that was three. Four, five, so every odd row, this is our odd row number one, two, this is another one, this is odd number three. Every odd row is gonna start with a chain four, that counts as our column, and then we're going to skip over to the, the column from the previous row and put a shell. And in the top of the next shell, we're gonna put a column and so on and so forth. Every even row, so row two here, will start with a half of a shell which is three treble in that first stitch and then put a treble into the shell and so on and so forth and we are going to continue to do this for 22 inches for my size pattern or whatever the inches is for your size pattern so you guys already have this this is a really easy two row repeat that we are going to do for 22 inches and um, I'm going to let you guys go about your work. I'm going to go about mine, and I will meet you back at around 22 inches or so. All right, we have come to the part where <clears throat> I measured it from the top to the bottom. On the panel, This is actually the working edge that I'm working with. So the bottom that we started with is over there off screen, but I did measure. I have, and I wrote it down. I made 22 rows, this might be a little different for yours, 22 rows, no, yeah, 22 rows equals, equaled 22 inches on my piece for me. So each one of my rows is approximately about an inch, and I did measure that out. So each one of my shell rows is an inch, so 22 rows equals to 22 inches. Now we are ready to split for the sleeves. We are going to start on the front panels so if we look at this part we are going to start working this edge here we're going to work just this edge upward so see here's the seam right here for the sleeve we're going to work this section here up here and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to go to the back of the garment and then we are going to work this back panel back and forth and then we're going to seam it at the top at the shoulders. Make sure that that is in focus, which it is not. So where we are now is I, and I'm going through and I'm writing on my pattern. This is why I like having my print patterns printed off. It's because I go through and I mark. I marked 22 is the inches that we need to have from the bottom to the top before we split for the arms. And then a thing to note here is it says you want to have just worked a row one. And I know this dash was confusing me. I had to read it like eight times. That dash, it just, that's a separation. So a row one. So 
It says 17, 19, 21, 23. One of those, the rows that should be a row one. But as long as it ends in the, the half shell, as long as your row ends in a half shell, which mine did, we're good to go. So now we can flip it over and we can do the first front of the pattern. It says with right side facing us, but there's not a right side to this garment because we're crocheting back and forth. There is not a right side to this garment. However, once we start doing the front panel on the, the, the breast area, there will be a right side because we're going to want, we're going to want to make sure that we're on the right side of the garment, if that makes sense. So, and again, we're going to be working back and forth. So there's not a right side and a wrong side. And I never pay attention to that anyway. I have this much left of my second cake. So we're doing really good. Um, I'm actually kind of happy that I have this much. I haven't used more. I thought I was going to use way more yarn. Because this isn't even two full cakes. And I already have the whole bottom half of the garment done. So, alright. We're good to go. <clears throat> now it is time. It is time to start the sleeve. And you do not want to bind off at this point, but you are going to need some stitch markers. Um, and it says, and I, again, these, these are going to show you your different sizes. And because I'm doing the 4X, I circled the numbers that I need in the pattern so that I don't have to keep going back and forth. So go through your pattern. And whatever size, like this is, I think, small, medium, large, extra large, 2X. What, is that how it goes? Small. So small is the 7 on the outside. Medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X. Circle the one in the pattern that you're going to be using. It makes it easier to follow the pattern that way. That's why I print them so I can write all over this if I need to. So this says, with right side facing, again, there is no right side to this. Skip the first half shell. So we're going to skip this first half shell of the beginning of the row. And we're going to count over 7, because that's my number for a 4X. But whatever your number is here, count over. For me, it's 7 shells. 1, 2, 3, 4 four, five, six, seven. And in the third treble of the shell, one, two, three, place a marker. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well. So from the other edge of the garment, which is way over here, again, skip the first and then I count over seven for my size pattern. One, two, three, four, six, seven place a marker in the third treble there was a couple times while i was knitting up this part <laughs> where i did like four in the shell instead of five and i just i fudged it because nobody's gonna know about me all right so now we have our markers placed that is going to be our front panel for our shirt so we're going to crochet the same pattern the same pattern back and forth in that section only. So we are going to count the place marker, the placed marker as the last stitch in the row. So for this next row, because we just did a um, a half a shell, which was what, row one of the pattern, we're gonna start this with a chain four. One, two, three, and four. We are going to do the pattern exactly like we have in the past. We're going to take in the top of the post and we're going to put a five treble shell. Two. Three. Four, five, and then we're going to place a treble in the center of that shell, just like we've been doing this whole time. You guys don't really need these directions, but I'm just going to show you, bring the camera down a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. 
Now I can see what I'm doing. We're going to do this till we get to that stitch marker. And we're going to treat that stitch marker as if it is the end of the row. So because I'm in a post, I'm going to do the five treble shell. Two, three, four, five. And this part should be like way quicker than the whole part of the garment because we're doing a lot less shells. I hate when you get down to so far on the cake and then it starts to collapse in on itself and then it starts to tangle. <laughs> Last night I was working on this and I was in bed and I had to stop what I was doing and ball up what was left of the cake because I got tired of fighting the knots and the tangles. So if you get to that point where it starts to, the cake starts to collapse in on itself, just stop and ball it up. Make your life easier. And you don't need a specialty yarn bowl, okay? You can use any bowl from your kitchen. You guys want to see my yarn bowl? It's filled with stuff right now. This is my yarn bowl. It's a glass decorative bowl that I got on clearance from Burlington. It's not a yarn bowl. It's just a glass bowl. It's not an eating bowl either. It really is a decorative bowl. It says do not eat out of this bowl. But I was like, well, if I'm not going to eat out of this bowl, I'm going to throw some yarn in there. So it's my yarn cereal bowl. <laughs> I really am surprised with how much I have liked doing these shells. Um, trebles can be a little tedious and they can be a little bit extra work, especially like when you're twirling like this all day long. <laughs> but I don't find trebles to be terrible. I actually kind of like them. We're almost to that stitch marker so I can show you what to do. See our stitch markers right there. Sometimes when I'm doing garments, because I'm a big person and the garment is like making a blanket, sometimes it feels like I get like discouraged and I'm like in the middle, I'm like, oh, this is gonna take forever. But this is just day two, and I already am split for the arms, so I'm not, like, unhappy. This went way faster than I thought it would. Alright, so we got two. Here's the last post before the stitch marker. We're going to put our shell in there. Mr. Cinnamon is watching Little Man outside. The front door is right next to the door of my office. Or there's our five shell. Now, because we started the row with that post, we're going to end the row in a post. This is exactly like every other row. So where we place that stitch marker, we're going to put a treble. And that was a row two of the repeat. So we're going to chain up four. One, two three and four. We're going to turn our work back around and work the front panel, which means now we are going to put a half shell here. Just repeat this pattern. Put our, it's exactly like we've been doing this whole time, put our post in the top of the shell and our shells in top of the post. When we get to the end of the row, we will have another half shell at the beginning. And we are going to do this on both both sides of the garment exactly the same because we're building up this front panel. That's not the right side. We're building up this front panel. So we're working here back and forth, back and forth till we get to the top. I need to work the pattern for 13 rows, so I'm going to check it at probably 11 
I am at the seventh row now. And I was like, that don't look long enough because I read that wrong. So I already showed you what to do here. Seven and seven, that's placing the markers on either side of the garment. So I need to work it for 13 rows for my size. But like I said, I'm going to check it at 11 and make sure it is the length that I want it to be for the front panel. And I'm going to work both sides. I will pop back on again when I have the front panel done and let you know if I had to stop at 11 or if I had to go to 13 and how many rows I did. I will let you know. And then um, we will work on the back. So I wanted to pop back on. I am going to do the full 11 rows. And I think I'm not going to need to do 13 rows. Because I just measured it at 10. And it is definitely roomy enough for my arms to fit in. But I think also what I'm going to do is I am going to add, when I get done with the 11 rows, I'm going to for sure try it on and make sure. But um, I am going to add on top of this row a row of half double crochets so that when we attach, and you do not have to do this, this is just what I'm doing. So see where the, the front and the back panel meet? It is the top of the shelves on both sides. I am going to do a half double row on the front and the back panel so that when I go to seam it up, it's just easier for me. You do not have to do that. It will be just as easy for you to seam it up the way that they say in the pattern. But for me, when I finish my rows on the front panels and on the back panels, I'm going to add a row of half double crochets across the top. Just... It'll A, it'll give me a little bit more room when I'm sewing the pieces together, but it will also give me a little more stability in the garment because there'll be a thicker strip of material here. Less chance that, you know, a cord or a, uh, not a cord, the yarn will snap somewhere and it'll just give me a little more security that it's not going to pop at the seams at the shoulders because I very frequently will like sit down and like it pulls on my clothes a little bit and I just don't want that seam to pop so just for my own my own safety my own um, extra little uh, insurance I am going to add half double and I will show you that's why I turned the camera back on because I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do so that we are all on the same page I am almost out of yarn, so <laughs> probably going to have to add another cake in here any second. I might not be able to put the half doubles on before I add another cake. Tangles. I feel like I'm playing yarn chicken to get to the end of the row. I really don't want to have to add another ball in to finish this row. That would be so silly. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to apologize in advance for any background noise. The little man is running in and out of the house. He's very loud when he's outside. His friend is very loud. Mr. Simon's cooking dinner. <laughs> There's no noises everywhere. And the birds are chirping. I don't mind the birds so much, though. Right. Dang, we got another knot. Four. I will be happy if I can just get to the end of the row. Let's see if we can do it. Nope. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. One, two, three, four, maybe, maybe. Five. Oh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Five and put the last one here. Now, 
I'm definitely out of yarn there. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, and this is totally optional to you, if you feel fine sewing these shells to the shells that are gonna be facing this way, do not, you can skip this step. This is a part that I am adding onto this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain one and I'm just gonna put half double crochets in each stitch all the way across every stitch. So every time you see a treble, just put a half double crochet in there. I even got it, look at that. I had enough yarn left over to put several half double crochets in. This is just going to add just a little bit more material here on both sides for me to sew my my seam together in. I don't mind having a visible seam there, unlike what they have here. I don't mind having a visible seam there at all, at all. So that's what I'm going to do here and on the other front panel. And then I will come back in a few minutes and I will show you the back panel. Okay, so we are on to the back panel now. And what I did already, is I got my yarn tangled up. What I did already is I read ahead in the pattern, <laughs> which is always a good idea. And I placed stitch markers on both sides of where the back panel needs to be. The, do, the, the directions, instructions, the pattern says five trebles away from the front panel. So we have the front panel this is our right side front panel and one, two, three, four, five. We're going to skip five trebles and in the sixth treble, I put a place mark. Uh, um, I put a place marker. Yes. And so this is going to be the underarm part of the garment. This is going to be the front panel. We're working up the back panel, which will be the back side of the sleeve. So we skip the five, we're gonna connect our yarn into the sixth stitch, which just so happens to be, see we're in this middle of this shell, we're going into the very next shell in the middle of that. And we are going to work row two of the pattern, just like we did with this one. So I'm slip stitching to join a slip knot. Oop, maybe, maybe I'm gonna. I'm going to chain four, two, three, four. And we're going to continue the panel just like we made the front panels. So we're going to put our shell in the top of the post. We're going to put our posts in the top of the shell. And we are going to work 11 rows for my size because if you remember when I did the front panels, I didn't go the full 13 that the pattern called for because it measured good on my body. So whatever your front panels measured at, how many ever rows you did, repeat that for the back panel. One, two, three, four, five. So because my front panels were 11 rows, I'm gonna do 11 rows on the back and I am going to finish the back of this with, or the top of this with a row of half doubles just for my garment. Um, and I'm gonna take this all the way across until it looks like this on that side. So I did not, little disclaimer, I didn't film my other, I didn't do my other panel yet. However, I still have a stitch marker where my other, my left front panel is going to start. So what I did is I just went six over from that and put a stitch marker. So I know that my back panel is going to end here. And so I can just work back and forth here. And whatever we started with, we're going to end with. So this row, we will end with a post and then we'll chain up four, create a shell and work the pattern again. And at the end of my 11 rows, I'm going to put a half double crochet border. And I will come back when I am done with these pieces. And I will show you how we're going to seam it up and any extra details I decide to put into this garment. All right. We are ready to do the finishing touches on our beautiful cardigan. I am so excited. I kind of have it pinned already on one side. So what I did, if I can get the camera up high enough to show you. This is our back panel. These are our front panels. I just folded it over, I lined up. Here, I'll show you. 
I will show you. Back panel, front panel, just fold it over. And the best thing to do right now in this very situation, and these type of stitch markers work a little bit better than the decorative ones that my daughter makes. Those worked well up until this point. I like these a little better. And pardon me, because I have one in my mouth. I like to pin where I'm going to sew up at. I always pin the front one and the last one and line it up as best as I can. You want your shells to kind of match up. Shell, shell, shell. As best we can. Shell, shell, right there. Make sure your shells line up with the coordinating um, posts underneath. And then you can add a couple more across the top just, just for a little bit of sturdiness, a little bit of strength. And try it on at this point, if you have not already. Try it on at this point. Make sure that your armhole here is plenty big enough for you to move your arm around. It's not too tight. Make sure your front panel comes across your chest where you like it. Um, for me, this fits me perfectly. And like I said, I did add a half double crochet row across the top just for seaming it up. It just makes my life easier. I just like it a little bit more. And I just kind of half, half pinned this because I needed to come back through and line up my stitches. Make sure my stitches are lined up. I am also at the finish of this, I'm going to put like a little collar to it. A couple of rows of, I think half double crochet, just for a little decorative purposes. You do not have to do that. The pattern does not call for that. I'm gonna line this up. I am also probably gonna add, because I'm not doing the sleeves that are in the pattern, you absolutely can do the sleeves in the pattern. I'm gonna line up. Oh, apparently. I did one a different size than the other. So my stitches are gonna line up here because apparently I ended on a different row. <laughs> it's all right, it'll work out. It'll work out. I'm still gonna kinda, as best we can, line everything up. It's fine, it's fine. Here we go. Um, because I'm not doing the sleeves that's in the pattern, I am just going to do a couple rows around the sleeves, just like I'm going to do around the neckline. But you can feel free to customize this pattern, just like a pattern I would have written. You can customize Premier's patterns, they don't care. Just don't try to like customize it and then resell it. That's that's not right. So this is what we got here. And you can sew this up a lot of ways. Um, you can sew it up, you can single crochet it closed if you wish. Um, I actually considered doing that, but I think I'm just gonna sew it up. What you want to do is make sure when you sew this up, you are sewing up the part that you want to be the inside of your, your garment. So you want the, the wrong side. Although, like I said, because we're working back and forth, there's not a right side or a wrong side to this garment. Just keep in mind, whatever side you are sewing up, flip it around so that it's inside out. So I am actually really, really happy with the way that this turned out. I cannot wait to do the finishing touches on it. Um, but if you don't wanna do the finishing touches that, I, that I'm doing on my own, cause that is not part of the tutorial, this is completely, this part of the pattern is completely up to you. 
you can follow the directions from here on out. I should also say that these needles I get asked about a lot. They have like a wire eye. I got these from Hobby Lobby. They are Knitter's Pride. I paid $2.99 for them, but I believe they were half off. Um, these are also available on Amazon. So for those of you who have asked me about those. All right, we're going to take a length of thread or yarn. You want to make sure that's long enough that you can sew up that whole thing. And thread our needle. And don't worry, I'll pull you guys back in in a minute so you're closer. See, I like these eyes because you can push on them here and open them up a little more. But they also will lay flat. It will squish down so that they fit through the holes a little better. And then what I like to do on this end is tie a slip knot. I do with my hook. Tie a slip knot. Take your hook out. Now, how I attach my yarn. I'll bring you guys nice and close so you can see what we're doing. So I go to the corner where my stitch marker is. I put the hook in, I put the slip knot through, I tie the slip knot kind of tight around my hook, and I pull it through, and that's how I attach the yarn, is I use a slip knot. Because when you pull back on this, that slip knot is just gonna tighten even more. And then you can weave in that end when you're done. So I'm gonna remove this. I am just going to go through, and you want your stitches to lay next to each other, you're going to go through both of the loops of the single crochet or the half double or whatever you put there or the top of your treble and you're just going to pull through both okay leave that out because we, we need to see go through both of the top of the stitches see like that there should be a v there let me pull my light in there we go now we can see we'll come closer to the light and the same thing over here, go through, and I know because they're close together, you can't really see there's a V there. Go through both. We're just going to do this. It's a simple, simple stitch. Pull it through. You can absolutely just go over the top of your tails, but I'm trying to keep them out of the way so we can see, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go through both of those. And then both of the pink pull. Just make sure that this loop doesn't accidentally like go around here and pull tight because that happens quite frequently when you're towards the end of a project. And you can do this over, you, you want to make sure you get every stitch, but you can go back and forth a couple times if you want. I don't really find that necessary. I usually just go over it once. And call it a day. Oops, I lost. I lost my thread. Mr. Cinnamon is in the other room. He's trying to be so patient with me. <laughs> I've been working really hard. This is the fourth tutorial that I have filmed out of the five. I've been working really hard, and I've been working long hours. And he's been very helpful, but. Um, the past couple days I've had to stop tutorials and stop working in the middle because we've had to go take the van in to get new tires because we popped a tire. We've had to go take the car in today to get an inspection because it's that time of year. And I'm not even on camera. I'm sorry guys. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. And right now we need to go pick up my car. <laughs> And he's patiently waiting for me to do this part of the cardigan. So, I definitely appreciate you guys watching all of these videos. Because there's been a whole lot of me doing this in between all of the other stuff that needs to be done as a wife and a mom. And it's been a lot of work. I don't mind it. I actually have had a lot of fun doing this, but it's a little stressful. So I really, really appreciate you guys being here more than you possibly could understand. 
I appreciate you watching my tutorials, sharing my tutorials, sharing what you've made from my tutorials. And even though this is not a pattern that I have written, it was written by Premier Yarns. I really like seeing what you guys have made. I like you guys seeing, I like seeing what you have made from my tutorials. I really do. So if you make this cardigan, please post it on all the social medias. Tag me, tag Premier Yarns, hashtag us, at sign us, all of the things. I dropped it. You guys would laugh if you saw how tight of the corner I am in. I'm at the end of my desk. I have a light stand on one side of me and a camera stand on the other side of me. And there's pretty much no room to move. <laughs> but that's the only way that I could set up my camera for filming. It's kind of funny. Weave my hair in. And you're just going to do this to both sides. But like I said, you can absolutely, if you hate sewing pieces together, you can come in and do like a crochet. You can do slip stitch um, attaching. You can do a single crochet attaching. Do whatever is the easiest for you. Because this is going to be on the inside of your garment. You're the only one that's going to see it. As long as you have the seam on the... Dang it. I hit my camera thing again. You're the only one that's going to see that seam. I don't mind doing the whip stitch because when I learned to sew when I was a teenager, I learned to sew by hand. So I made like blankets and I made pillows and I made a shawl. I remember baby paprika just reminded me the other day. Um, her, one of her homecomings, or maybe, maybe she went to prom. I don't remember. Because we were talking about Juju's prom and all that. She's all, do you remember that shawl you made me? And then I had to think back and remember. I had not learned how to sew very long before this had occurred. Like, I had just learned how to sew. She's all, can you make me a shawl? I was like, yeah, let's go to the Joann's or Hancock or whatever it was. And she picked out this really fancy fabric. It was like sheer and I hand sewed the entire triangle shawl and I was like dang I wish I knew how to crochet back then and I look back and I'm like I don't understand why my mom didn't crochet her a shawl but I don't think my mom knew how to crochet shawls I think I only remember my mom ever crocheting baby blankets twin size blankets and she made the occasional bonnet style hat and she made baby sweaters sometimes um, but she had to follow a pattern. And that's all I remember her ever making. I don't think she knew how to. And I know she didn't know how to freehand anything. Um, so it's just. I always think back to stuff like that. I was like I wonder. I wonder what she would think. I wonder what her opinion would be of what I do. Because I think. She probably would be like astounded. By what I am able to do. Alright, so we're at the last stitch here. You want to make sure on your ends that maybe you put a couple of stitches in there just for strength. Uh, for me, I know that I'm going to be coming back over and I'm going to be crocheting a neckline on mine. Um, so for me, I don't have to be as... Um, careful right here but if you are not putting a neckline or a border right there you might want to like go through a couple few times make sure it's nice and locked in there tight so you don't you know lose anything all right so tie that off we'll sew on our ends later and now i have enough thread here i can actually sew up the other side but remember you got to make sure that your seams are on the same side and that you don't accidentally flip that inside out. That's why I suggest pinning it all at once. And then that is the seam on the inside. And that's the seam on the outside. This is the part that's going to show. 
And that's why I put the half double crochets there because I just wanted a little extra, you know, strength at the shoulder because I'm tough on garments. That is what my seam is going to look like. All right, I am going to show you the other. Oh, I'm not going to show you the other side. I'm going to do the other side exactly like I did this side. I'm going to run and go pick up my car. And um, then I am going to not show you guys because it's not part of the pattern. I am going to do double crochet or half double crochet. We're going to start at the bottom. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to attach my yarn down here. And I'm going to do half double crochets. Three half double crochets in each shell row. All the way up and around. I'm going to continue on doing the shells around the corners. And then I'm going to go down this side. And I'm going to do three or four rows. And then I'm going to do the same to the sleeves. And then I am going to show you a final project when we're done. I am so in love with the way this is turning out. All right, guys, I will see you when I'm done to show you the final project. And I will probably give you like a little um, runway show. I'll show you what it looks like on my body. <laughs> I'll go mm, 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 walking down the runway. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll be back in a bit. All right, so we are back and I am finished with this beautiful garment. I am so happy. I'm so happy that we finished it. I did two rows of half double crochet. I did it up and around the back and then back down and then I reversed it. And then I did the same thing for the sleeves. I just did two rows of half double crochet around the sleeves. I like the way it looks. I like it better like this than the way the pattern calls for with the sleeves. But by all means, if you want to add sleeves, you go ahead and you do that. Um, this is your garment. Make it how you're happy with it. Um, and you can make the sleeve as long or short as you want. Because I didn't do the sleeve and because I didn't do this as long as the pattern said to do it, because I was using a different yarn and a different hook than they recommended, um, I actually only used three cakes of the boutique which makes me so happy because the pattern said that it was going to take four cakes for my size and three cakes was absolutely perfect. I had like minimal amount left. <laughs> so it was perfect. You can also, if you want it to be a little bit longer or you can also go by, go by. Yeah, you can go by. You can go at the end and add length here. You can add like shells around the bottom of this. You can add some rows of trebles or double crochets or whatever you so please that you want on this. Thank you so much for tuning in to this tutorial. If you make this, I want to see it. Tag me, tag Premier Yarns. If you do hashtag make it Premier or at sign Premier Yarns or hashtag cinnamon stitches or at sign cinnamon stitches, I usually will, not always, I usually will get a notification or I will see the post because I do follow make it I do follow make make it premiere and I do follow cinnamon stitches. So thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an amazing premiere week. And I thank you all for being here and joining me for this. This has been a lot of work. That's an understatement. It's been a lot of work. I've been busting butt for three weeks now to get all these tutorials filmed and intros filmed and get the videos pieced together. But it has been worth every second that I've got to spend with you guys. We've made some beautiful things that we can all wear with pride and showcase all the beauty that is us in our bodies with our beautiful work wrapped around us. Um, thank you to everyone at Premier Yarns who has helped to make this possible, who gave us the discount codes and who helped me to um, get everything situated and gave me permission to use their patterns. Um, and thank you all for watching. You guys mean everything to me. This has been a great week. I'll see you in the next one.